The way they shot this was first, you know, there with the cameras are in the hall anyway for this stuff. And there's this glass wall here. So they shot the whole scene, just two cameras dollying back and forth out in the hall, looking through the glass. And I actually used that quite a lot. Um, you know, here, and then some of this, some of this dialogue here. Watch. I'm not serving tonight, Mr. Jennings, am I? Not tonight, You know, we've got a two shot here. It's the widest shot. Oh, you have. yeah, it's the widest one. It's all distorted because we're through the glass. But, you know, I didn't have, normally it would go a single from over her left, a single from over her left shoulder, a single from over her right, over his right shoulder. Because, you know, they're, they're at opposite ends of the room. You can't, you can't really hold them in a two shot unless you come way back here. But in this case, you know, it, I convinced myself that it worked. But just he, fine. But and it's, it's, not also, an, it's not a crucial moment for you to be in. So. But it's also very Altman esque that you're kind of looking in at the edges of, yeah. of a scene and figuring things out. He didn't want you to, to know everything about everybody at all times. You're yeah. sp supposed to glean pieces of information. Yeah. You don't know quite which, which lines are important and what's, you know, the thing about the orphan when everybody stops, you kind of Ooh. go, okay, that must, that must be significant somehow because we really point a finger at it. But everything else just kind of goes by and you don't know. And, and about the, you know, the visual style, he, he said he kind of wanted people now and then to be craning, <laughs> craning their heads to see around something to what they want to see, because that was okay with him if there were Well, it's even like you said, the, the off-screen dialogue, that's the same thing, like, what, what is Maggie yeah. Smith talking? You know, it's, it's, and the other thing that was interesting is that everybody was individually mic'd at all times, like in those upstairs cocktail party scenes or whatever. That, so, so Tim could later on, even though they mixed the, that dialogue initially when they were shooting at, lo, at the time, Tim could always go back and find individual pieces of dialogue that, that were interesting, that yeah. were not necessarily obvious in the first shoot, in the initial yeah. shooting. Yeah, so we had a choice. We had complete control over, over every piece of sound. And we actually, you don't see it here because it was just playing out of my laptop, but we panned all the audio to match where the person was on screen just to help you find them. You know, it's not, it's subtle enough that it was never distracting, but uh, you know, he wanted it to be, he wants you to work a little bit. And you know, what you'll find, especially at the beginning of the movie, um, it takes a little bit of time to get comfortable with the accents. And you know, the, one of the very first scenes were uh, in the servants' quarters when everyone's everyone's coming in and bustling, and there's a lot of people talking and uh, kind of a mix of accents, and you know some American ac audiences panic a little bit, but don't worry about the dialogue. You'll you'll catch up, and and it's not there's nothing nothing vitally important. This is one of the rare films, though. Several reviews said it's a film you should watch twice because it's better the second time. So. And so now that you're listening to us, you're going to enjoy it more because you won't be, feel like you have to know everything. He kind of said it's, the analogy would be if you go to a party and you're, um, you come back from the party and you say to the person you're with, so who was the blonde? Was she, was she with the fireman? Or, you know, and you, you kind of yeah. get parts of people's story and it's just enough so that you, yeah. you get, get as much as you need to know. You don't have to know everything. And, yeah. The other thing that was interesting, and it's particularly interesting in this scene, is that all the actors were, were wonderful actors, and they all knew what their thing was, you know, what their roles were, what their behavior was, what their secret passions were, what their relationships were, and where they were going throughout the movie, so that they're acting all the time. Yeah. They never know where the camera's yeah, going to be. Yeah, what they didn't know is when they were on camera, so they were never saving it for their close-up. You know, they're just, it's a, it's a different way of, of approaching acting. And we did this even more so in, in Rachel Getting Married, where you just get in and play the scene. You can't play the camera because it's in a different place every time. You, you're supposed to repeat the blocking as much as you can, you know, what you do when and which way you turn and all that. But, you know, actors are often acutely aware of where the camera is. So you take that away from them by just having it different every time. And you play the whole scene and they never know when they're on and when they're off. And for an actor, you know, some actors panic in that situation and some actors thrive in that situation. These actors all thrived mm -hmm. in that situation because then they, you just see, kind of see behavior, you know, real life behavior from them that you don't normally see when people are saying, okay, you know, here's the frame, action. 
We were, and, it wasn't like that. And actors love Altman. I mean, he hires actors that can handle that responsibility, but he also gives them so much freedom to work things out in rehearsal, and um, they it liberates them. By, yeah. And it's very much more real, much more naturalistic. Yeah. And you you know there were some wonderful just reactions. My favorite shot in this scene is this one coming up. <laughs> That one. Oh, I'm so sorry to disturb you. Please do sit down. And I don't know why. I just and, like it. And, and my favorite. You know, everyone's there performing, and they, you know. My favorite reaction is when he says, "You're all set then," and yeah. that smug expression. The woman on the left of Ryan Felipe. Yeah. That's just you know. Yeah. She just. She's wonderful. Yeah. She had some. Show that. Look at her expression. She's just. Yeah. She looks like a Dr. Seuss character. <laughs> yeah. She's got a wonderful reaction. Wait, let's see if I can find it. That's back during this. Oh, here it is. Parents in service. And was that way they chose to go into it? What an interesting question. <laughs> what, uh, to which I'm afraid I cannot provide the answer. You know, it wasn't her shot, but she's there. She's there acting away because she doesn't know if she's in the shot or not. And, uh, you know, the film is just full of wonderful little things like that. And if you look around the frame, you'll be, you'll be rewarded. And for an editor, you know, these are the best kinds of scenes to cut because sometimes, you know, every time you're cutting, you want it to feel like there's a reason for the cut. You want it to feel like you're giving new information. You're showing people something that they want to see. Sometimes it's just that that person's talking, so you cut there, and then they're done talking, so and they're not doing anything, so you cut somewhere else. But in here, in a film like this, there's so much interesting stuff going on that there's, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches. It's like you want to cut, and you, you can often get away with cutting very fast. This film we didn't so much. Uh, in Sense and Sensibility, there's some scenes in that that are cut faster than the fight scenes in Crouching Tiger. And I actually, you know, took a minute of each and analyzed it. it. I've done this for film classes. And the number of cuts, it's actually faster in sense of sensibility, but it doesn't feel like it because everything you're going, you know, you're in a room where everybody has secrets and everything, everything that somebody says means something different to somebody else. And it's these kinds of emotionally dense, rich scenes that you can pop all over the place and it doesn't feel like you're going cut, 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 cut because every cut feels motivated.